So today I have a theory that I think might help solve the Toyota Tundra engine failure problem. Today we're diving into something that has almost become a meme in the truck world, that tighter tolerances are causing all of these engine failures. Everyone said it, I've said it, a lot of people in automotive news have said tighter tolerances are the problem. But we're gonna get into that in just a minute and my theory on what I think Tundra owners and even myself with the Ram Hurricane should do, any of these turbocharged engines, to increase the longevity of the engines. But before we do that, I wanna clear something up. I posted a video about this on my channel a couple weeks ago about a crate engine, brand new crate engine that had blown up in this 2022 Tundra. I wanna clear up what actually happened, which I don't know if it's really better or worse. The new engine, the crate engine that blew up was diagnosed with a cracked camshaft, as you can see here in the picture. So here's a nice close up of that camshaft just kind of snapped right before the journal. Now, I don't know why that snap seems a little odd that a recalled crate engine had a snap camshaft. Maybe it's just bad luck. One in 200,000. I don't know. And I'll show you a couple more Tundra failures just this month in December, right near Christmas. And the reason I'm showing you these is because I think that this fix that I would, I would put in or implement to the Tundras, I would actually do it if I owned a Tundra at this point. I think it's worth a shot and it's worth testing this theory out. And I'm gonna tell you why here in a moment. This was a 2025 Tundra. This guy had a rebuild and he said, hey, I thought the 2025s were supposed to be fixed. Yeah, everybody thought that as well. He's considering trading for a second gen 20 or 21. Had a short block rebuild in his 25. And of course, there were several more. A 2023 with 24,000 miles, spun main bearings. This is another 2024, 26,000 miles on it. He was on a 900 mile trip home from Vegas. Now his truck stuck 600 miles away from home. Blake was another 2024, 46,000 miles. Same problem, won't turn over. And here's another 2024, 44,000 miles. Man, these people put on a lot of miles on their trucks. Felt a wobble in the drivetrain, hood vibrated, and then boom. He says, Merry Christmas. Uh, life is too short to be negative. It will be an unforgettable Christmas. Hey, at least he's staying positive on the issue. So that brings me to the tighter tolerance myth. And could we have it all backwards with the V35A that's in this versus the old 5.7 3URFE engine? Did you know that the V35A actually has larger clearances in the main bearings and rod bearings than the previous 5.7 liter? I didn't know that till recently. And I thought it would be really interesting to play this theory out and actually consider what might be going on with the V35A versus the older 5.7 liter and why these keep spinning main bearings. Now, I don't have the official Toyota shop manuals like I'm sure some of you do, but I tried to double check all of this information and here's what I came up with. So the V35A is severely under square, which means it's going to produce a lot more torque at low RPM, similar to the old 5.73 URFE. The 3 URFE was a little more balanced, 94 millimeter bore. The V6 in the new twin turbo is 85 millimeter bore, both almost 100 millimeter stroke. So that's in the new turbocharged engine, it's going to be throwing a lot of speed at the pistons and the rods and a lot of stroke versus the bore in this turbocharged engine. That's more pressure and more torque on the main bearings. But here's the big one. This is actually, I think, the biggest misconception that most people have had on the internet and just in the modern engine building world is that these newer engines are tighter tolerances. Well, that's not true in this case. The 5.7 liter has tighter main clearances, main bearing clearances, and tighter rod clearances. Look at that, the V6 has a larger gap between the main bearings and the journals on the crankshaft and the rods. So that tells me that they actually designed this engine properly, right? You want more of a gap. You want more cushion in between those main bearings and their journals because you want to have more oil in there. These new V6 twin turbo engines are producing a lot more torque at low RPMs, and that's going to bring us kind of to our next theory. The 3UR just doesn't live under the same stress as this V6 engine. High boost, higher cylinder pressure, higher piston speed. You actually need that. But I think you need more oil viscosity and more oil pressure than what the Tundra is giving. And I think that's what's causing these Tundra failures or at least contributing to it if debris is still something that you believe. So here's my theory and here's what I would do if I was running a new Tundra. I'd be running probably 030 or 0W40 oil. 
And here's why. Did you know that back when the Ford EcoBoost came out, I think it was around 2010 or 11, they were actually specking 0W20 oil for the EcoBoost. You know what they changed to in 2014? Ford ended up changing their 3.5 EcoBoost to 5W30 oil. Why do you think that is? I wonder if they had a reason. They had years of data selling a lot more vehicles than what Toyota sells in the Tundras. There had to be a good reason that they took the hit on the CAFE and the EPA standards and they said, no, we're gonna run 530 at minimum because that's what these high boost engines need. And it's not just Ford, most European engines, this is actually from Chevron, talking about the difference between American oils versus European oils in their vehicles. BMW, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Porsche, all using 5W40, 030, 040, engine oils. Why do you think they're doing that? And even some trucks in America, the Ram RHO, because they know they weren't going to sell that many RHOs, they spec 0W40 oil for the twin turbo inline six. By the way, the twin turbo inline six in the Ram has more main bearings to distribute this load across, and we're not seeing any main bearing spin yet in the Hurricane engines. I wonder why. Now, the second reason I actually might move to a 0W40 oil in my twin turbo Hurricane, and I think Tundra owners should do the same, check this video out. This is from a Tundra owner. Now, he's mapping the oil pressure from these variable oil pumps. I think this is another contributing problem and why these 0W20 oils are not creating a big enough buffer between the main bearing and the journals. And I think this is just causing the wear. I think the debris is coming from them eating themselves with too thin of oil protecting the main bearings and the crankshaft. He actually shows how low the oil pressure gets at idle while it's warm on this Tundra. And as you'll see, it's, you know, I'm doing a video of it idling here and then holding the RPM steady close to 2000 RPM. I find it very interesting that the oil pressure will fluctuate um, at idle. To me, between six PSI and 13, and that's that's pretty significant. Um, slow pressure than I would expect, especially. Um, I just I just changed the oil today, but I've got it at idle right now, and you can see you know nine psi, but it's fluctuating. You know, and the RPM is fluctuating as well, but not much. I'm about to stop. I'm driving the vehicle right now, so at idle speed we are right around 10 to 12 psi it will vary up to 13 to 15 ooh 7.7 .7. that seems a little low gosh 6 psi i saw that too he actually ended up posting this in the group as well he said the lowest pressure he saw at idle after it was all warmed up was four PSI on the variable oil pump. Now, I don't know about you, but I would never want my, my oil pump to be probably less than 15 or 20 PSI. I don't care what the RPMs are, and I don't care about the parasitic loss or the gas savings by lowering that oil pressure. So I think we've got two problems here. I think we have an oil viscosity issue, and I think we have these low pressure or variable oil pumps that maybe are a little bit too aggressive in the way that they're mapping and changing their pressure for the oil. Now for you Tundra guys, Hurricane people, obviously there might be warranty implications if you switch to a 040, but at this point, I think it's worth it. And I'm in a future video going to do a test. I'm gonna get my baseline in my Hurricane engine zero W20 oil test done. I'm gonna do three or four oil tests. And once I get that to balance out and I have a good baseline with zero 020, I'm gonna to switch to zero 040 and see if the wear actually goes down. In these twin turbo engines, especially in the case of the Tundra, it's producing a ton of torque. It's severely under square. It's actually really designed for low RPM towing, even more so than the EcoBoost and I believe the Hurricane engines. And so you just wonder if this 040 GM actually recommends that in their 6.2 liter to try to extend the life of some of these 6.2s that maybe aren't dead yet, but they're exhibiting some of the symptoms. So yeah, I just think that EPA and CAFE standards have led to a lot of problems. And this might be yet another case where 040, maybe it'll save some of these Tundras. Maybe in those severely under pressure cases where you have four PSI on the oil pump, maybe a 040 would actually create enough film 
with more clearance on the main bearings and the rod bearings to actually protect those main bearings from eating themselves in this V6. Remember the V6 versus the 3URFE, the 5.7, the V6 has fewer main bearings. Fewer main bearings than the Hurricane, fewer main bearings than the old V8. So you're, you're not able to distribute that load across a lot of metal. So all that torque, all that load on these, on these V6 little crankshafts, man, it is a lot to ask for 0W20 oil, in my opinion. Could be wrong, could be totally wrong, and don't take this as uh, recommendations from you know, a mechanics perspective or anything like that. I'm just a YouTuber looking at the data, looking at things going on, and suggesting what I might do if I owned a Tundra. I'm gonna do this in my Hurricane engine. I don't care that it specifies 0W20. If the RHO can handle it and it's a high output engine, I think the standard output Hurricane can handle it as well, looking at the design of the engines. I think we need to start thinking outside the box. I am past believing that this is still a debris issue. They were having this problem in the Toyota and Lexus variants of this V6 all the way back, I think in 2018 or 2019, when this engine first came out, or maybe it was a little bit later than that. This engine has had main bearing failures for a long time. And if I had to guess, they've been specking 020 oil in Lexus and with the Sequoias, with the Tundras, any variant of this V6 engine. Let me know what you guys think as always in the comments. Thanks for watching. Till next time.